Somebody say woo. say me woo. Glory be to God. Utukufu kwa Mungu. Amen. 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 We are celebrating because he's alive. Tunasherekea Yesu yuko hai. Say he's alive. Sema yuko hai. He's alive. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Forever is alive. Forever is alive. Amen. He's alive. Amen. Amen. He's alive. Jesus is alive. Forever is alive. Amen. Say he's alive. Amen. He's alive. Jesus, Jesus is alive. Forever is alive. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hear every person that comes here says, Buana Yesu asifiwe. Nimesikia hapo watu wanasema Buana Yesu asifiwe. Whatever it means, I know it means a good thing. Chochote inamaanisha inamaanisha kitu kizuri. That means praise the Lord. Oh, so then praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. This is the best place to be. Hapa ni mahali bora sana kuwa. Amen. Amen. You see the church of God is unique. Unajua kanisa la Mungu ni la kipekee. And whenever you are in the church of God, zote kwenye kanisa la Mungu, you may not be familiar with everything that is being said. Unaweza kuwa haujavizoea vitu vyote ambavyo vinasemwa. But lakini it resonates in your spirit. Vinafufuka katika roho yako. And you know and you know na unajua that this is God. Ya kwamba huyu ni Mungu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have just loved everything that has been going on in the house. Nimependa kila kitu ambacho kimeendelea kwenye nyumba hii. I would usually na kwa kawaida like to sit in a corner na napenda kuona kwenye kona and just soak in everything inside of me. Na kunyonya kila kitu kiingia ndani yangu. See that's how I find strength. Na hivyo ndivyo ninavyopata nguvu in the presence of God. Kwenye uwepo wa Bwana. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you've got some gifted people in this house. Nimeona watu wenye vipawa sana kwenye nyumba hii. I tell you when they sing na wanapoimba something just happens in my inside. Kuna kitu kinatokea ndani yangu. And I want to bless every person that has been here to minister to us in music. Nataka nimbariki kila mmoja ambao ametuhudumia kimuziki mahali hapa. You are a blessing. Ninyi ni baraka. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Asanteni sana. Amen. Amen. Yesterday, jana, as I sat in my room, nilipoketi kwenye chumba changu. I was excited. Nilikuwa na shauku. And the spirit of the Lord said to me, na roho bwana kaniambia, I was excited about the season. Nilikuwa nafurahia majira. There is a, 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 a convention like this going on at home. Kuna kongamano ambalo linaendelea kule and I was talking with my leaders how it was going. Na nilikuwa naongea na viongozi wangu jinsi ilivyokuwa likiendelea. And I was really excited. Na nilikuwa na furaha sana. And then as I'm praying, sasa wakati nilipokuwa nikiomba, the Lord began to speak to me. Bwana akaanza kuongea na mimi. He says to me, akaniambia, what we are celebrating tunachokisherekea came about kimekuja because somebody paid the price kwa sababu kuna mtu alilipa gharama hallelujah hallelujah that's why we can we are celebrating here today na ndio maana tuko hapa tunasherekea leo if he didn't pay the price asingelipa gharama we would still be in bondage bado tungeendelea kuwa utumwani we would still be living as slaves bado tungeendelea kuishi kama watumwa we would still be living as prisoners kama tungeendelea kuishi kama wafungwa but somebody loved us enough lakini kuna mtu alitupenda zaidi to die for us mpaka akafa kwa ajili yetu and not just that he was willing to die na si tu kwamba alikuwa tayari alitoka kwa hiari kufa a father loved us enough baba alitupenda zaidi not to withhold si kuzuilia his only son 
mtoto wake wa pekee He says for you akasema kwa ajili yako to be where I want you to be ili uwe pale ninapotaka uwe I don't mind paying the high price Sijali kuhusu kulipa gharama iliyo kuu I don't mind sacrificing him Sijali kumtoa dhabihu And since yesterday na tangu jana that word sacrifice has just been in my spirit Hilo neno la dhabihu limekuwa likitembea ndani ya roho yangu I said to Mama Jael a while ago Nilikuwa na mama Jael kidogo. I said I perceive. Nikasema nahisi. In the evening service, kwenye ibada ya jioni, we want to take scriptures. Tunataka tuchukue maandiko and scatter the atmosphere. Na kubadilisha hali ya hewa. You see there is something about this season. Unajua kuna kitu kuhusiana na haya majira. That God has done. Ambao Mungu ametenda. There are elements, there are forces. Kuna nguvu zinazoendelea. That have been broken. Ambao zimevunjwa. That have been destroyed. Ambao zimeharibiwa. And we have been empowered. Na sisi tumetiwa nguvu. So I feel like this evening. Sasa najisikia jioni ya leo. Let's bring scriptures. Tulete maandiko and puncture the atmosphere for these blessings to flow into our lives. Na tukushambulie hili anga ili baraka zishimiminike. You know it's usually unajua kwa kawaida at the end like this majira kama haya we like to be empowered tunapenda kutiwa nguvu we'll be prayed for tutaombewa we'll be anointed tutapakwa mafuta that is very good na hiyo ni nzuri sana as the spirit of the lord move we may still do that kama roho bwana anaendelea kutembea tunaendelea kufanya hivyo strongly within me lakini kwa nguvu sana ndani yangu you see the power unajua nguvu that was able to break that bulldozer on the grave ambayo iliweza kuvuta ili bulldozer kwenye maombi was the power of the highest ilikuwa ni nguvu ya aliye juu and when that power came na hiyo nguvu iliposhuka it was able to break the bulldozer iliweza kuvunja hiyo bulldozer for jesus to come up kwa ajili ya yesu kuja and jesus says na yesu akasema he has given us that same power ametupatia nguvu hiyo hiyo so this evening sasa jioni ya leo whatever bulldozers bulldozers zozote that have been standing in our lives ambazo zimesimama kwenye maisha yetu I'm a pastor. Unajua mimi ni mchungaji. Principally, that's my principal calling. Yaani huo ndio mwito wangu kabisa. I function in other areas of ministry. Ninafanya kazi kwenye huduma zingine. But my principal calling is pastor. Lakini huduma yangu iliyo kuu ni ya kiuchungaji. And I'm a teacher of the word. Na pia ni mwalimu wa neno. As a pastor, kama mchungaji, there is something I know. Kuna kitu ninatambua. Yes, God has empowered us. Ni kweli Mungu ametutia nguvu. But lakini my people watu wangu still go through bondage. Bado wanaendelea utumwani. I don't know about you. Mimi sijui kuhusiana na ninyi. They still go through issues. Bado watu wanapitia matatizo mbalimbali. And so, na hivyo, Jesus says, Yesu akasema, my house, nyumba yangu shall be called. Itaitwa a house of what? Nyumba ya nini? A house of prayer. Nyumba ya maombi. We can't bypass the prayers. Hatuwezi kuacha maombi. This morning, asubuhi ya leo, I want us to look at sacrifice. Nataka tuangalie kuhusu dhabihu. I want us to look at various people. Nataka tuangalie watu mbalimbali standing right with God. Ambao walikaa sahihi na Mungu. But they were not flowing in the areas God wanted them to flow. Lakini hawakuweza kutenda vizuri kwenye maeneo ambayo Mungu aliwapa. Until they release something to God. Mpaka walipoachilia kitu kwa Mungu. The Bible says, Biblia inasema, For God so loved the world. Kwa maana jinsi hii Mungu aliupenda ulimwengu. That means God loved us. Na akatupenda sisi. Even though God loved us, isipokuwa ametupenda, we were still held slave to sin. Bado tulikuwa watumwa wa dhambi. And by reason of that, na kwa sababu hiyo, we were still held captive to the devil. Tumekuwa mateka wa shetani until mpaka God released something. Mungu aachilie kitu, a sacrifice. Dhabihu in the person of his son. It wasn't the death of Jesus. It wasn't when Jesus died that God started loving us. No. God loved us. Even before the foundations of the world. But nothing could happen for us. Until a sacrifice. Like Jesus. Was released. Before or mbele our sins could be broken but in life lakini uzima the sins have been broken 
Dambi imevunjwa. I've been forgiven. Zimesamehewa. That means Hiyo inamaanisha the door has been opened. Mlango umefunguka. Lazarus was raised from the dead. Lazaro alifufuliwa kutoka wapi? Lazarus came out from the grave. Alitoka kaburini. The door was open. Kaburi lilifunguka. But Lazarus. Lakini Lazaro was still bound. Bado alikuwa amefungwa. In grave clothes. Katika lile kaburi. Our sins have been forgiven. Dhambi zetu zimesamehewa. The door is open. Mlango umefunguka. But we still carry baggages. Lakini bado unabeba mizigo. We die. We die. Tunakufa. We'll go to heaven. Na tutaenda mbinguni. Because our sins are forgiven. Kwa sababu dhambi zetu zimesamehewa. But in the meantime. Lakini kwa muda. We live on earth. Tunaishi hapa duniani. And there are challenges. Na kuna changamoto. That we've got to deal with them. Ambazo lazima tukabiliane nazo. That our lives here on earth. Ili maisha yetu hapa duniani. Can be pleasant. Yawe mazuri. Can be fruitful. Yawe na matunda. Can be satisfying. Yawe na kutosheka. And this is why. Na ndio maana. As I look at the pre- simple that god put in place this season kama mungu aliweka kanuni katika majira haya i want your night to know nataka wewe na mimi tujue god mungu is telling us anatuambia you want to overcome any challenge in your life unataka kushinda changamoto yoyote maishani mwako it's called a sacrifice inahitajika dhabihu and so briefly kwa hiyo kwa kifupi let's look at a few people Tuangalie watu wachache who were able to use the power of a sacrifice walioweza kutumia nguvu ya dhabihu to sit where god wants them to sit kuketi pale ambako mungu alitaka wakati to waketi. stand where god wants them to stand kusimama pale ambako mungu alitaka wasimame to wasimama. be who god wanted them to be kuwa vile ambavyo mungu anataka wawe let's look at this woman tumwangalie huyu mwanamke pastor nathan spoke about her briefly pastor nathan alimwongelea kidogo she's called hana Aliitwa Hana. 1 Samuel chapter 1. Samuel wa kwanza sura ya kwanza. Give us from verse 11. 1 Samuel chapter 1. Samuel wa kwanza sura ya kwanza. Actually start from verse 1. Tuanzie ule mstari wa kwanza. And there was a certain man of Rethathim Zophim of the hill country of Ephraim whose name was Elkanah the son of Jeroham the son of Elu Elihu the son of Tehu the son of Zuph and Ephratai verse 2 He had two wives the name of one was Hannah and the name of the other Peninnah and Peninnah had children but Hannah had no children 3 Now this man used to go up year by year from his city to worship and to sacrifice to the Lord of hosts at Shiloh where the two sons of Eli Hophni and Phinehas were priests of the Lord the four On the day when Elkanah sacrificed he will give to he will give portions to Peninnah his wife and all her sons and daughters But to Hannah he gave a double portion because he loved her though the Lord had closed her womb And her rival used to provoke her grievously to irritate her because the Lord had closed her womb. So it went on year by year as often as she went up to the house of the Lord she used to provoke her therefore Hannah wept and would not eat. And Elkana her husband said to her Hannah why do you cry? Am I not and why don't you eat? Why is your heart troubled? Am I not more than 10 sons to you? After they had eaten and drunk in Shiloh, Hannah rose. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat beside the doorpost of the temple of the Lord. So she was deeply troubled and prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. Verse 11. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, If you will indeed look on the affliction of your servant and remember me and not forget your servant but will give to your servant a son then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life and no razor shall touch his head verse 12 And she continued praying before the Lord and Eli observed her lips Listen to me Nisikilize This is a story that we all know so well. We are not told for how long that Hannah had been married to Eli. Sorry, 
to Elkana. Hatujaambiwa ni muda mrefu kiasi gani ambao Hana aliolewa na Elkana. And for which she did not have the fruit of the womb. Na hatujaambiwa ni kwa muda gani alikuwa tasa. But we can infer something. Lakini tunaweza kuangalia kitu. From verse 4. Kuanzia mstari wa 4. Let's did you something from verse 4. Hebu tutambue kitu kutoka mstari wa 4. Now read verse 4. Hata siku ile ilipofika Elkana alipotoa dhabihu na kumpa mkewe penina sehemu akawapa watoto wake wote waume kwa wake sehemu zao Now watch that Sasa angalia hilo It says Penina had sons Akasema Penina alikuwa na wana Minimum of sons would be what two right Inamaanisha wana walikuwa wawili And Penina had daughters Na huyo Penina alikuwa na mabinti. Minimum of daughters will be how many? Two. Maana ya hao mabinti walikuwa wangapi? It could be more. Inaweza kuwa zaidi ya wawili. That means hiyo inamaanisha at least four or five years. Alikuwa na mabinti wa nne au watano. Had passed. Wamepita. Hannah did not have a child. Hana hakuwa na mtoto. And the Bible says, na Biblia inasema, every year, kila mwaka, when they went to the temple, wakienda hekaluni, Hana would cry before God. Hana atamlilia Mungu. But, lakini, for five years, kwa miaka mitano, she cried unto God. Anamlilia Mungu. God didn't even answer her. Mungu hata hakumjibu. God did even do anything. Hata hakufanya chochote. God never even behaved like he was hearing what she was saying. Mungu hata hajisababisha kusikia kile ambacho yule mwanamke anaomba. And yet his word says, na bado there shall none be barren in thy land. Alisema hapata kuwa na tasa katika nchi. But here is a woman. Lakini hapa tunamwona mwanamke. Tumbo lake limefungwa. She is in the temple. Na yupo hekaluni. For five years. Kwa miaka mitano. She's crying to God. Anamwomba Mungu. Her maid Mwenzake is harassing her anamchokoza and she's crying to God anamlilia Mungu and she's praying to God na anaendelea hana kuomba and she's giving back God his word na anampa Mungu neno lake and she's quoting the scriptures na ananukuu maandiko but God does nothing lakini Mungu hafanyi chochote until one day mpaka siku moja Hana learned Hana akajifunza what God was speaking to me yesterday. Kile ambacho Mungu alikuwa anaongea na mimi jana. So in verse 11. Kwa hiyo mstari wa 11, Hana, Hana, she says God, akamwambia Mungu, if you give me Go back to that verse 11. Look at what she asked. Tuangalie ule mstari wa 11, angalia maombi aliyoyaomba. She did not ask for a child. Hakuomba mtoto. She was specific. Alikuwa anataka kitu maalumu. If you give me kama ukinipa a son, mtoto wa kiume, I will give him back to you. Nitakutolea. She got God's attention. Akapata akapata msikio la Mungu. You know why she got God's attention? Unajua kwa nini Mungu aligeuka kumsikia? Because at that time, kwa sababu wakati huo, God, Mungu was looking alikuwa na for a son mwana that he can raise up ambaye anaweza kainuka to be an honorable priest. Kuwa kuhani wa heshima. You know why? Unajua kwa nini? Eli's sons. Watoto wa Eli Hophni and Phinehas. Huyo Ofini na Finehasi they were not doing good. Hawakuwa wazuri. And Eli na Eli was an old man. Alikuwa mzee. And Hannah said to God. Na Hana akamwambia Mungu. God. Mungu. I know you've got a good business sense, God. Ninajua wewe Mungu ni mfanyabiashara mzuri. If you give me a son, ukinipa mtoto, right now you need one yourself. Najua hata wewe mwenyewe unahitaji. And you are God. Na wewe ni Mungu. You can give birth to a child. Huwezi kuzaa mtoto. But me I can give birth to a Lakini child. Lakini mimi naweza kukuzalia so Let's negotiate God. Kwa hiyo tufanye biashara hapa. We've got to understand Nataka uelewe. that a sacrifice is all about negotiation. Dhabihu ni kuhusu swala la majadiliano. But let's negotiate. Lazima ukae na Mungu mjadiliane. My womb can carry a son for you. Mwambie Mungu naweza kubeba mtoto kwa ajili yako. Give me a son. Nipe mwana. And I will give him back to you. Na mimi nitakutolea. And I promise you God. Na mimi nakuahidi Mungu. A razor will not touch his head. Wembe hautakata nywele zake. And this one will serve you. Na huyu atakutumikia. All the days of his life. Siku zote za maisha yake. Now tell me something. Niambie kitu. Which woman ni mwanamke gani who has waited for a child ambaye alishawahi kuomba mtoto for 5 years kwa miaka mitano or more au zaidi has one 
akapata mmoja and wants to give it away na akasema mtoto namtoa talk of a sacrifice huo ni ulimi wa dhabihu and god na mungu understands alielewa the taste ladha of a sacrifice ya dhabihu when god heard that mungu aliposikia hayo hana Hana had brought in a powerful instrument for negotiation. Alileta chombo kizuri cha majadiliano. How desperate are you for the needs in your life? Sasa unahitaji gani mkubwa sana kwa ajili ya maisha yako? This is the secret. Hii ndio siri. Listen. Sikiliza. If God kama Mungu could do this. Angeweza kufanya haya. Listen to me church. Niangalie kanisa. We can bypass it. Hatuwezi kuvuka. If God kama Mungu did not sacrifice his son. Hakuweza kumtosheleza mwanao. If God did not sacrifice his son. Kama Mungu asingemtoa adhabu mwanawe. Satan, Satan had taken over. Angechukua utawala. It was powerful. Nilikuwa ni nguvu. And there was nothing that God could do. Na hakulikuwa hakuna kitu kingine ambacho Mungu anaweza kufanya. Satan alikuwa anatawala. Nisikilize kanisa. God is the God of justice. Mungu ni Mungu wa haki. And when man had sold to Satan, wakati mwanadamu alimuuzia Satan, God could not step in. Mungu akashindwa kuingilia kati. Na kumwambia shetani. It was me that made it originally. Ni mimi ndio nilitengeneza halisi. Well listen to me church. Nisikilize kanisa. I don't know where this microphone was made. Sijui jinsi kipaza sauti kimetengenezwa. Maybe it was manufactured in Japan in Korea in America I don't know. Labda kimetengenezwa Japan, Marekani, Korea au Excuse me. Lakini samahani. I bought it with my money. Nimekinunua kwa pesa yangu. You may have been the original manufacturer. Leo unaweza kuwa ni mtengenezaji halisi. I have paid the price for this. Lakini nimelipa gharama ya hii. So it is mine. Kwa hiyo ni yangu. If the Japanese or the Koreans they want it back. Kama mjapani au mkorea anahitaji hichi kipaza sauti. Sit on the table let's negotiate. Kaa kwenye kiti tujadili kuhusu hiki. I bought it for 200 dollars. Kwa sababu nimenunua dola 200. So tell me. Niambie. How much do you want it for? Unataka nikuuzie kwa shilingi gapi? You can buy for 200 dollars. Siwezi kununua kwa dola 200. Because when you made it, kwa sababu ulipoitengeneza, you didn't know how good it was. Hukujua uzuri wake. I have used it. Nimekitumia. I have tested it. Nimeonja. When I preach, even the person at the end they can hear me so I know it is good. Kwa hiyo nikihubiri hata mtu kule mwisho ananisikia kwa hiyo najua ni nzuri. So you want it back? Kwa hiyo unataka nikurudishie? Let's negotiate. Tukae tufanye mjadala. Ni kiasi gani? And God understood that. Na Mungu alielewa hiyo. If he had to take man and the world back. Kama anataka kumchukua mtu na ulimwengu urudishe kwake. He had to offer something higher. Lazima alipe gharama ambayo ni ya juu. The blood of bulls and goats and rams did not work. Ka, eh, malipo ya dume, mbuzi na kondoo haikufanya kazi. You see God tried to use the palliatives. Mungu alijaribu kutumia vitu mbadala temporary measures Alijaribu kutumia vipimo vya dharura He said to Israel Akasema when you sin he said to Israel Akamwambia wana wa Israeli When you sin ukitenda dhambi kill an animal Uwa mnyama use the blood tumia damu and that will pay the do the trick Na hiyo itakulipia dhambi zako But lakini it did not work Haikufanya kazi He gave man the law Akatoa kwa Bwana He says observe the law Observe the law. Akasema mtii Mungu. But the very first day God gave them the law they broke the law. Siku hiyo hiyo ambayo Mungu aliwapa sheria walivunja. And so God realized Kwa hiyo Mungu akagundua Everything I'm trying to put in place is not working. Kila kitu ambacho najaribu kukiweka mahali pake hakifanyi kazi. I am losing. Na mimi nakitumia. I've got to take back the world. Na mimi nataka nirudi kwenye neno. I've got to take back these people to me. Lazima niwarudishe watu kwangu. And so God Kwa hiyo Mungu had to sit down alibidi aketi and work out an ingenious plan. Akainuka na mpango wenye nguvu. When Satan struck Job, Shetani alipoongea. Job says my problem is big akasema tatizo langu ni kubwa because right where i am kwa sababu vile nilivyo a man cannot free me mtu hawezi kuniweka huru the person that can free me mtu pekee anaweza kuniweka huru has to be somebody lazima awe ni mtu that can mediate ambaye anaweza kuwa mjumbe between god and me kati ya mungu na mimi because this problem i am having kwa sababu tatizo nilionalo is a problem between me and god ni tatizo kati ya mungu na mimi listen to me nisikilize before sin came kabla dhambi haijaja man had access to god mungu mwanadamu alikuwa na uwezo wa kwenda kwa mungu in the cool of the evening bila nasema wakati wa jioni god will come down 
in the garden Mungu anakuja kwenye bustani and God will talk with man Na Mungu anaongea na mwanadamu And God will communicate with Adam Na Mungu anawasiliana na Adam What do you think God was talking with Adam Sasa unadhani Mungu alikuwa anaongea nini na Adam Adam God will say to Adam Mungu atamwambia Adamu How do you see the animals Unaonaje hao wanyama Adam will say God Adam anasema Mungu That one called lion Huyu mnyama anaitwa simba That one has a temper God Huyu ana hasira You can joke with that one any how Wezi kumchezea huyu mnyama And God will say no 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 Adam see Mungu anamwambia Adam hapana There are some other lesser animals Kuna wanyama wengine ambao ni wadogo When you see him having that temper Ukiwaona wakiwa kwenye hizo hasira He's hungry Ni njaa Just take one of the other animals and give to him Mpatie mnyama mwingine na umpate When he eats then he's quiet Akila anatulia And Adam will say to God Na Adam anamwambia Mungu God Mungu Who is this woman you gave me Huyu mwanamke ulionipa ni nani? Every night I cannot sleep. Kila usiku siwezi kulala. Whenever I try to sleep. Nikijaribu kulala. She is there trying to count my ribs. Kila wakati anajaribu kuhesabu mbavu zangu. She is poking my ribs. Ananichoma choma kwenye mbavu. But what does she want from my ribs? Mungu huyu mtu anataka nini kwenye mbavu? And God says, Mungu akamwambia, No, she is trying to see whether I have removed another ribs and made another woman. <laughs> anajaribu kuona kama nimetoa mbavu nikatengeneza mwingine. Another one said because every night when I come back God. Ah, uh, Adam anasema kila jioni ninaporudi. The woman who said to me you have come late. Why were you late? With who were you talking? Huyu mwanamke atasema umekuja umechelewa. Ulikuwa wapi? Kwa nini umekuja usiku? And Adam says God I have told how. Now Adam anasema Mungu In this garden is only you and me. He garden tulikuwa we na mimi. But she does not believe me. Lakini haniamini. So in the night when I'm sleeping. Sasa usiku ninapolala. She is counting my ribs. Bado anahesabu mbavu zangu. Maybe God when I went out like that. Yes. Maybe when I went out. Labda nilipotoka. God removed one more ribs. Mungu aliondoa tena mbavu nyingine. And made another woman. Na akamtengeneza mwanamke mwingine. And kept her there. Na akamweka kule. And God says, "No, Adam." Mungu akamwambia Adam sio hivyo. You are getting it all wrong. Unakosea. These people they call woman. Huyu unayemwona anaitwa mwanamke. By their nature. Kwa asili yake. They are very jealous. Ana wivu. Don't take it to heart. Don't be angry. Usimkasirikie. It's because she wants to spend all of her time with you. Ni kwa sababu muda wake wote anataka kae na wewe. Do you see the conversations Adam is having with God? Tiaona matadiliano ambayo Adam na Mungu walikuwa nayo. You know what God is doing? Unajua Mungu alikuwa anafanya nini? God is helping Adam navigate the world. Mungu alikuwa anamjeri anamsaidia Adam kuutawala ulimwengu. God is helping Adam to deal with the issues he's facing. Alikuwa anamsaidia Adam kushughulikiana matatizo aliyoko duniani. And this was the very reason. Na hii ndio ilikuwa sababu Why Satan was jealous. Ambao shetani ilimpa wivu. And he said I will do everything to break that relationship. Na akasema nitafanya kila kitu kukata uhusiano. Because kwa sababu Satan shetani used to be alikuwa in the place mahali where Adam was. Ambako Adam alikuwa. He had a relationship with God. Alikuwa na mahusiano na Mungu. And he used to talk with God. Na alikuwa anaongea na Mungu. He used to be the worship leader of God. Alikuwa mwanamuziki wa Mungu. And every time he would sit with God. Na kila wakati akikaa na Mungu. And he would talk with God he will receive revelation and he will come out na atatoka you are great wewe ni mkuu and you do miracles so great na unatenda miujiza miku there is no one else like you like you there is no one else like you you say you are great and you are great you do miracles so great you do me so great there is no one else like you there is no one else like you say one more time there, there is, is no one else like, like you how did lucifer get this revelation sasa luciferi alipataje uvunuo because of the time he spent with god ni kwa sababu ya muda ambao aliutumia na mungu listen to me nisikilize jesus yesu had to come ilibidi aje because lucifer kwa sababu lucifer had destroyed this relationship aliharibu haya mahusiano that we had with god ambao tunayo na mungu and because of that na kwa sababu ya hilo the very garden was shut against us usani hiyo hiyo ilifungwa kwa ajili yetu the garden of eden was custom made hiyo busani ya edeni iliondolewa it was made for you iliumbwa kwa ajili yako everything that man wanted was right there kila kitu ambacho mwanadamu alikihitaji kilikuwa ndani ya busani 
Satan could not stand that. Na Satan alishindwa kuivumilia hiyo. So he came in. Kwa hiyo akaingilia kazi. And he destroyed our relationship with God. Na karibu mahusiano yetu na Mungu. And every other thing that God tried to put in place. Sasa kila kitu ambacho Mungu alitaka kukiweka mahali pake. Bring us back to him. Ili aturejeshe kwake. Did not work. Akikufanya kazi. And so Job. Kwa hiyo he cried out. Ayubu akalia. He cried out. Ayubu akalia. I need a days man. I need an umpire. I need a mediator. Akasema ninahitaji mjumbe atakayesimama kati. But look at it. Lakini tazama. If that mediator kama huyo mjumbe is man. Ni mwanadamu. Please sir, come. Tafadhali njo. You see? This man huyo mtu knows job anamjua ayubu and so he wants to mediate na anataka kuwa mjumbe but there is a problem lakini kuna tatizo this man huyo mtu does not have the status of god hana tabia ya kiungu he can talk for job anaweza kaongea na ayubu but he cannot speak for god lakini hawezi kuongea habari za mungu because he doesn't have god's status kwa sababu hana tabia za kule kwa mungu and so job understood na ayubu alielewa his problem tatizo lake is not simple si rahisi the man kwa hiyo mtu that will be able ambata we to stand kusimama between kati yake job ya ayubu on the one hand kwa mkono mmoja and god na kwa mungu on the one hand mkono mwingine is the man ni mtu that at one time ambao kwa jina fulani to be man lazima awe mwanadamu to put his hands on man aweke mkono wa mwanadamu and on the other hand na wakati mwingine he has to be god lazima awe mungu to put his hands on god aweke mkono kule kwa mungu and he can say na anaweza kusema god mungu job ayubu you need to come together and solve this problem lazima mje pamoja msuluishe ili tatizo Thank you. Asante. Sit down. Kate. Now, can you see that that was an a serious problem? Unaje unaweza kuona kwamba hilo tatizo lilikuwa kubwa. Where would there be somebody? Sasa anapatikana wapi mtu? Who is God? Ambaye ni Mungu. 100%. 100%. And man. Na mwanadamu. 100%. Somebody say God loves me. Sema Mungu ananipenda. Somebody say God loves me. Sema Mungu ananipenda. And this is why God Na hii ndio maana Mungu had to come out ilibidi atoke. With this ingenious plan. Na huu mpango wenye akili sana. In concentration. Kwa ku kuwa na concentration the father the son and the spirit baba mwana na roho and he says son wakakaa na majadiliano we would lose these people wakasema tutawapoteza hao watu remember what the bible says kumbuka kitu biblia inasema that god created all things for his pleasure ya kwamba mungu aliviumba vitu vyo vyote kwa furaha yake that means hiyo inamaanisha if we were not in the life of god god had no pleasure sasa kama sisi tusingekuwa kwenye mstari wa kimungu and Mungu hapati so raha. God could not sleep. Kwa hiyo Mungu akashindwa kulala. For many years. Kwa miaka mingi. For many generations. Kwa vizazi vingi. So he said my son. Akasema mwanangu. You know I love you. Unajua nakupenda. But right now. Lakini sasa. The stakes are high. Tate hitaji ni kubwa. The stakes are high. Hitaji ni kubwa. The game has come to sudden death. Umefikia kwenye mauti fulani. If I don't bring out my joker. Nisipoleta kadi yangu ya mwisho. We would lose this people. Tutapoteza hao watu. So son, kwa hiyo mwanangu, I need you to do something. Nakuhitaji ufanye kitu. Forget that we are one. Sahau kwamba mimi na wewe ni mmoja. Forget that we are equal. Sahau kwamba mimi na wewe tuko sawa. Go to earth. Nenda ulimwenguni. Through the womb of a woman. Kupitia tumbo la mwanamke. And be born. Na uzaliwe. Such that na ili kwamba you, can, you come from me utaita kutoka kwangu you have my nature god utapata asili yangu akili and you come through the womb of a woman ukipitia kwenye tumbo la mwanamke and you will have utakuwa status katika nafasi of, of human ya kibinadamu and so kwa hiyo this person huyu mtu at the same time kwa kati huo he is god and he is man na ni wanadamu but god says na mungu akasema i have to give you up lazima nikutoe i have to sacrifice lazima nikutoe dabi in as much as i love you so much ili mradi nakupenda sana so god took his son and gave him up for man na ndio maana mungu akamchukua mwanae akamtoa kwa wanadamu you and i Yesu alipokufa wewe na mimi to God. tulipata njia ya kwenda kwa Mungu sin wenye dhambi was broken ili dhambi says, when Jesus gave up the ghost Yesu alipoenda msalabani somebody give me your towel your wrapper your something watu wawili ruka mbele haraka two people Kiswahili ngumu watch this angalia hii take that from that end hold wewe shikilia upande huu au uko na wewe uko 
Lift it up. Inua ju. Watch this. Tazama hii. This is God. Uyule ni Mungu. This is you and I. Na huku ni wewe na mimi. This is the, our sins. Na hapa kanti ni dhambi zetu. It kept us from God. Na zilituzuilia kwa Mungu. God loved us. Mungu anatupenda. But see where God is. Lakini ona mahali Mungu alipo. See where you are. Naona kule uliko. God could not come. Mungu hawezi kuja. Because our sins. Kwa sababu dhambi zetu. It says in the book of Isaiah. Anasema kwenye kitabu cha Isaiah. Our sins says the ears of God are not deaf. Biblia inasema masikio ya Mungu si kizibi. Are not short. Na wala mkono wake si fupi. Lakini dhambi zetu separated us from God. Zinatutenga na Mungu. And so God could not reach us. Kwa hiyo Mungu hawezi kutufikia. Even though God loved us. Ijapokuwa anatupenda. When Jesus died. Yesu alipokufa. When he gave up the ghost. Alipokata roho. The Bible says. Biblia inasema in the temple. Pale hekaluni. In the holy of holies. Patakatifu patakatifu. There was a veil. Kulikuwa na bazia. From the top. Bazia juu. To the bottom. Mpaka chini. When Jesus died. Yesu alipokufa. That veil was broken. Hilo bazia lilipasuka vipande viwili. The veil was removed. The barrier of sin was removed. And so God could come out. And God can now be with us. The barrier had been broken. The barrier had been removed. We were now free. But church. That was just the beginning. The freedom. So we are now in Christ. We have come to him. But we carry within us all kinds of baggages. We carry within us the ancestral curses. The family curses. The witches and the wizards. And all the obstacles. And the hindrances. And the sicknesses. And the barrenness. And the poverty. And the cancer. And the problems. And every challenge. Yes, we are there. But the problem still lingers on. And God is saying to the church. Learn from me. I brought you here by reason of a sacrifice. You want to remove every hindrance in your life? Learn to bring me a sacrifice. So Hannah, she says to God, God, Mungu, give me a son. Nipatie mwana. And I will give him back to you. Nami nitakurudishia. And that day, na hiyo siku, God, Mungu, who is good and uh, identifying a sacrifice. Ambao anajua kutambua dhabihu. She gave Hannah a son. Akampatia Hana mwana. And Hannah conceived. Na Hana akabeba mimba. And Hana bore a child. Hana kazaa mtoto. And after she wins the child, na baada ya kum she took Samuel into the temple of God. And you and I know today after reading scriptures that in Israel there was no greater judge in Israel than Samuel. How did that come about? By reason of his sacrifice. And what about Hannah? Vipi kusiana na Hana? First Samuel 2. Samuel ya kwanza sura ya pili. Verse 21. Mstari wa 21. First Samuel 2 and verse 21. Indeed, the Lord visited Hana and she conceived and bore three sons and two daughters and the young man Samuel grew in the presence of the Lord. Na Bwana akamwangalia Hana, naye akapata mimba, akazaa watoto wa kiume watatu na wa kike wawili nao huyo mtoto Samueli akakuwa mbele za Bwana Hana Hana from the day she gave a sacrifice Tangu siku alipotoa dhabihu the door to her womb was open Milango ya tumbo lake ilifunguka and after Samuel na baada ya Samueli Hana had three other sons Hana alikuwa na watoto wengine watatu wa kiume na mabinti wa wili. So kwa hiyo kwa jumla Hana had six children. Hana alikuwa na watoto sita. Somebody said the power of a sacrifice. Sema nguvu ya dhabihu. Somebody said the power of a sacrifice. Sema nguvu ya dhabihu. You must learn to give God a sacrifice. Lazima ujifunze kumtolea Mungu dhabihu that hurts you. Ambao inakuuma. 
a sacrifice Zabihu. that touches you some place mahali flani let me show us another story. This time Samuel is a grown man. And Samuel is a big man. Samuel is sitting at his office. And there is a problem. First Samuel chapter 7. Samuel kwanza sura ya From verse 7. Now when the Philistines heard that the people of Israel had gathered at Mizpah, the Lord of the Philistines went up against Israel. And when the people of Israel heard of it, they were afraid of the Philistines. Eight. And the people of Israel said to Samuel, Do not cease to cry out to the Lord our God for us, that he may save us from the hand of the Philistines. Nine. So Samuel took a nursing lamb, and offered it as a whole burnt offering to the Lord. And Samuel cried out to the Lord of Israel, and the Lord answered him. Do you give me amplified, give me verse 9 in the amplified version. Give me verse 9 in the amplified version. This ESV says, look at that. So Samuel took a sucking lamb. Kwa hiyo hii amplify inasema Samuel alichukua mwanakondoo anyonyae. When the Philistines wakati wa Filisti attacked Israel or was they were planning to attack Israel at Mispa. Wamepanga kuishambulia Israel kule Mispa. And the people cried to Samuel. Na watu wakamlilia Samuel. Samuel did something. Samuel alifanya kitu. She took a breastfeeding lamb. Akachukua mwanakondoo anyonyae. A lamb that is still breastfeeding. And killed it. Now that, it feels terrible, isn't it? You feel it like, oh my God, this is gross. Why will he do so, a thing to such a helpless animal? But watch this. Read something similar. Kitu kinachofanana. First Samuel chapter 6. Samuel wa kwanza sura ya 6. Verse 7. Msari wa 7. This is when Hapa ndipo the ark of God. See the ark of God had been taken had been captured. Unajua sanduku la agano liko limechukuliwa. But everywhere they took the ark, the Philistines had captured it. Na popote wanapolipendeka sanduku la agano wa Filisti wanachukua. And everywhere the ark was in the Philistines, it was bringing them problems. Na kila mahali hilo sanduku la agano likiingia kwa Filisti linaleta matatizo. And so they called on the Israelites. Kwa hiyo Mungu wa Israeli, they said please we are tired of dying. Come and carry your ark. Come and take it back. And so, watch what they did. Watch what Samuel says. Now then, make and prepare a new cart and two milch cows on which no yoke has ever come upon. Okay, wait. Now watch that. He says, build a new cart and find two cows that have just given birth to calves. Make sure the cows have never been yoked to a cart. Hitch the cows to the cart, but shut their children away so they don't come with them. Now watch this. I'm trying for us to understand that the strength of a sacrifice is the pain it causes you. So, in Mizpah, Samuel says, give me two suckling uh, lambs and he killed them. To bring the, the ark of God and tie the chariot on them and put the, the ark of God on the chariot. The two breastfeeding cows will be the ones that will pull the chariot. Keep their children away from them. I know mothers would understand this pain better. When you take a child from a mother who is still breastfeeding. What does the mother go through? 
Nini kinatokea? You feel pain. Unasikia maumivu. It is not just emotional, psychological, it is even physical. Siongelee kisaikolojia au kihisia na ongelea maumivu ya kihalisi. The mother is in pain. Huyo mama anakuwa kwenye maumivu. And Samuel says, Na Samueli akasema, These cows who are breastfeeding. Hao ngombe ambao wananyonyesha. Keep their children away. Waondoeni watoto wao. So watch this. Angalia hili. This breastfeeding cow. Hao ngombe wanaonyonyesha. Is pulling the ark of God. Wanavuta sanduku la agano la Mungu. It's a sacrifice. Ni dhabihu. What is the cow doing? Huyo ngombe anafanya nini? The cow is groaning. Huyo ngombe The cow is crying. Mm. Analia. Mm. Because the breast is full. Sababu, and the mecha. breast is heavy. Na and na it is painful. Na But that is the sacrifice that God requires. Na in order na to move his ark. From the house of the enemy. Into the house of God. Listen to me church. The church has not yet gotten a secret about finances and wealth. Kanisa bado halijajua siri ya kiuchumi na utajiri. Nebukanesa. Wakati Nebukanesa captured Israel. Alipowakamata wana Israel. And took them to Babylon. Na akawaweka Babiloni. The Bible says. Biblia inasema. He took all the goals. Alichukua dhahabu zote. From the temple of God. Kutoka kwenye hekalu la Mungu. And where did he take it to? Na alizipeleka wapi? He took it into the temple of Dagon. Alipeleka kwenye hekalu la Dagoni. And today, na leo, if you have to transport kama unataka kubadilisha the ark of god the ark of god from the hands of the enemy from the hands of the philistines wealth is not in the church wealth is in the world wealth is with the devil and this is why watch men in politics when they want power what do they do they go to satan and they sign a pact with satan and satan empowers them with wealth Them, kill your mother kill your father give your son give your daughter and i give you wealth for the church we want wealth we want to take it from the hands of the enemy it is in the mouth of dagon we want the ark to move from the philistines into the house of god Psalm 126 says They that go out wale watokao weeping wakilia groaning wakiuzunika with shifts wakiwa na seeds in their hands na mbegu mikononi mwao sowing them wakizipanda what do you see unaona nini you see the breastfeeding cow utaona huyo ngombe anayonyesha that is driving along the streets and is groaning anahuzunika analia anaomboleza And if the church wants the wealth to move from the mouth of Dagon, you have to come with a sacrifice that is costly, that is painful, that you are coming with it. You are saying, oh God, this is all that I am. Oh God, this is all that I've got. But only you can bless me. Only you can prosper me. Only you can make it happen. On my own, I cannot do it. It has to change. It has to stop. Remember, Kumbuka, when this same ark, they had tried. They had tried to bring it in grand style. Kwa mtindo wa kisasa. You see, they had become modern. Unajua wamefanyika wa kisasa. And so they got a good Range Rover. Kwa hiyo wanataka kufanya mambo ki kisasa kisasa. And they got a good Homer Jeep. And they said, let's carry God. Na wakasema and put God in it. Tumweke tuliweka sanduku la Bwana. Carry God. Kama wewe all the sophistication. What did God do? Mungu atafanya nini? God killed them. Mungu akawaua. And they died. Na wakafa pale pale. Because they did not observe the principle of sacrifice. Kwa sababu kanuni za dhabihu. You cannot take anything from the hands of the enemy. Huwezi kutukua chochote kutoka kwenye mkono wa adui. To you ukileta kwako without coming with a sacrifice. Bila kuwa na dhabihu. A befitting sacrifice. Lazima iwe dhabihu ya kimungu. And this is why 
God Mungu is always about a sacrifice. Yote yake ni kusiana na dhabihu. Pastor Nathalie spoke about the sacrifice of this woman. Pastor Nathan aliongelea dhabihu ya huyo mwanamke 54000 dollars. Ah dola 1054. That's what she poured out on Jesus. Na ndicho alichompatia Yesu. And you see Na when she gave that sacrifice dhabihu, the men there wanted to oppress her wanaume pale walitaka kumgandamiza who stood up to speak for her nani alisimama kuongea kwa niaba yake it was jesus ilikuwa ni yesu mwenyewe when god sees your sacrifice mungu akiona dhabihu yako and yako, men want to speak against you na wanadamu wanataka kuongea kinyume na wewe and people want to fight you watu wanataka kupiga na wewe your god will arise on your behalf mungu wako atasimama kwa niaba yake na ndio maana vile nasema the battle is not yours vita si yako vita ni vya bwana when god has your sacrifice in your hands mungu ukiona ukiona dhabihu kwa niaba yako to speak against you na watu wakianza kunena kinyume na wewe mungu atakwambia stand behind kaa nyuma this fight is not your fight hii vita sio ya kwako this fight is my fight and mpigano ni yangu and god will take them up for na mungu atachukua ushindi one final one twende tuangalie mwisho the ultimate of it the ultimate of it uh, matokeo yake it started in exodus yameanza kwenye kutoka exodus chapter 12 kutoka 12 in, in the book of exodus kwenye kitabu cha kutoka it was time ilikuwa ni wakati for god wa Mungu to bring Israel kuwaleta wana wa Israel out from bondage toka utumwani for 400 years plus kwa miaka 400 na zaidi they had lived as slaves waliishi kama watumwa in Egypt kule Misri and God says na Mungu akasema time for me to bring you out ni wakati wa mimi kuwatoa everything else that God had done chochote ambacho Mungu alikifanya against Pharaoh kukuwa kinyume na Farao Pharaoh refused to let them go. Farao alikataa kuwaruhusu so waondoke. Mungu akasema, I know the age old thing. Ninajua mwisho wa mambo yote. Exodus 12 verse 3. Kutoka 12 mstari wa 3. God says to them, Mungu akawaambia, Announce to the whole community of Israel that on the 10th day of this month, each family must choose a lamb or a young goat for a sacrifice. Somebody says sacrifice. Mtu aseme dhabihu. Somebody says sacrifice. Mtu aseme dhabihu. Somebody says sacrifice. Mtu aseme dhabihu. It says sacrifice. Unajua dhabihu is always about blood. Ni kuhusiana na damu. That's why it's called sacrifice. Na ndio maana inaitwa dhabihu. It's always about blood. Yote ni kuhusiana na damu. Am I saying you should go and kill humans? Je, nimesema ukauwe wanadamu? You see? Unajua if I give you nikikupa my 1000 dollars. Dola yangu 1000. That's my blood. Hiyo ni damu yangu. Do you know that? Unajua hiyo? Because that money kwa sababu hiyo pesa represents a quantity of my life. Inawakilisha uwingi au thamani wa maisha yangu. When you work, unapofanya kazi. You see when that woman gave 300 denarii. Unajua huyo mwanamke alipotoa dinari 300. The, the Bible says Biblia inasema is an equivalent of one year's salary. Ilikuwa ni mshahara wake wa mwaka mzima. In other words, kwa maneno mengine, that was her life for one year that she gave to God. Hayo yalikuwa ni maisha yake ya mwaka mzima alimpatia Mungu. That was her blood. Ilikuwa ni damu yake. I don't know about you but in where I come from When somebody wants you to give money you say this is my sweat and blood and I cannot give it anyhow Mtu akitaka kukupa pesa anasema hili ni jasho langu na damu yangu siwezi kukupa kikawaida kawaida So we refer to money as sweat and blood Kwa hiyo tuna na ni pesa tunaiwakilisha kama damu na jasho Sacrifice is always about blood Na ndio maana dhabihu ni kuhusiana na damu The most ultimate the bill you was Jesus's blood. Ilikuwa ni damu ya Yesu Kristo. So God says to them, Yesu Mungu akawaambia, After every miracle that God had performed in Egypt. Baada ya miujiza yote ambayo Mungu ameitenda kule Misri. Pharaoh refused to let Israel go. Farao alikataa kuwaruhusu wana wa Israeli waondoke. Fact at a time, hata hivi kuna wakati, Pharaoh began to despise our God. Farao alianza kumdharau Mungu wetu. Pharaoh said, Farao akasema, Who is even this your God? Huyu Mungu wenu ni nani? So God says, Mungu akasema, You want to know me? Unataka kunijua? Never mind you know me. Usijali utanitambua. Moses. Musa. Gather the people. Wakusanye watu. On the 10th day. Siku ya kumi, Choose a lamb. Chagua mwana kondoo. For a sacrifice. Kwa dhabihu. And verse 11. Na msari wa 11. Give me verse 11. Nipatie msari wa 11. Or 12 and 13. 
Now, these are your instructions for eating this meal. So, Be fully dressed, put on your sandals, carry your walking stick in your hand, eat the meal with urgency. That will be a message for another day because every one of that represents something. Verse 12. On that night... I will pass through the land of Egypt and strike down every firstborn son and every firstborn male animal in the land of Egypt. I will execute judgment against all the gods of Egypt, for I am the Lord. Amen. 13. But the blood on your doorposts will serve as a sign. Marking the houses where you are staying. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. The plague of death will not touch you when I strike the land of Egypt. Amen. Now watch this. When everything else failed, God says, bring a sacrifice. When, I, when God saw that sacrifice, Mungu alipona ilo dhabihu, he says, this night, akasema usiku hu, the angel of destruction will go out. Malaika wa uharibifu atatoka. Listen to me, God, church. Nisikilize kanisa. If God is God, Kama Mungu bado ni Mungu, God has every arsenal at his disposal. Mungu ana kila kitu kwenye zinake. Many times we think that the angels are just good angels. Si tunadhani malaika ni malaika tu. God has angels of destruction. Mungu ana malaika wa uharibifu. One day, siku moja, a lady, mwanamama, she used to come to the church. Ambaye amezoea kuja kanisani. And then she started operating on the spirit of divination. Akaanza kufanya kazi katika roho ya utambuzi. And I called her to the office. Na nikamuita ofisini. I said to her, nikamwambia, This is not the right spirit. Hii sio roho sahihi. And you're creating confusion in the lives of God's people. Na alikuwa analeta kuchanganyikiwa kwenye maisha ya watu wa Mungu. You have to stop it. And you have to agree for me to pray for you and cast out that spirit. But you cannot operate with it in the church of God. So she got angry and she left the church. When she left the church, she got two apostles to work with her. And they, have an, they had an altar. In that altar, my name was written big. And every evening, every evening, Kila jioni, she and these two other little demons working with her, <laughs> they had something like a, like, 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 um, a hammer. They said they must kill me. So every evening, Kila jioni, with my name there, and the hammer, they are doing their incantations and they are hitting me that I must die. That I must die. That I must die. How did I know this story? How did I know the story? God moved. These two girls, they ran to me to repent. What happened? The woman says, I sent two thugs to come and beat her up. And that these men beat them up. And it was late in the night. And they beat them up. And in fact, this woman, she left in the morning and said she's never coming back to this place. And these two came that they want to come and worship the God that I serve. I said to them, I didn't send any thoughts. But you know what? Every time I stand on the altar, I say, oh God, my father, every enemy that is fighting against me arise and fight for me. You know what God did? He sent two angels of destruction. And they went there and asked them to stop. 
Listen to me, church. God says to Israel, Give me a sacrifice. Because tonight, Pharaoh has despised me. I am going to send my angels of destruction. And what was the mission of the angels? To execute judgment against the gods of the land. You see, a lot of time you think your problem is the witch. You think your problem is the witch in your village. Listen, the witch in your village cannot operate in Nairobi. Because Nairobi is not his territory. For them to operate in Nairobi, they have to collaborate with the gods of Nairobi. For them to give them passage. And when God wants to deal with your issues, God does not see the little witch in your village. God deals with the gods of the land. Because these gods of the land, they are the ones that withhold your blessings. They are the ones that collaborate with little demons to afflict you with all kinds of things. And they are the ones that hold you captive and refuse to let you go. And God says, this is all you do. Offer me that sacrifice. But take the blood and put it upon your doorpost. As a sign. You put it on the two lentils and you put it down. What do you see? the two lentils and you put it down. What do you see? The two lentils and you put it down. That is the cross of Christ. You see, many years before Jesus will come as the ultimate sacrifice, God had to use that to free his children from the bondage of Pharaoh. And God says, all I need to do is just to see the blood. I don't need to look into the house. All I need to do is to see the blood. And that means if an Egyptian had heard about what God was going to do and runs into the house of an Israelite. Even if that Egyptian was a thief, if he runs into the house of an Israelite and he was a firstborn, in that house, he would be saved because God is not looking inside the house. God is only looking at the blood. God is interested in the sacrifice. Are we surprised that unbelievers understand the price of a sacrifice and when they bring it they rule us the Bible says whosoever controls the altar controls the throne unbelievers know the price of a sacrifice and so they take a big sacrifice to the altar and they are ruling all over the place. I know we do sit mahali. in the church and we criticize and we criticize na wana and we complain wana and we murmur na wana and we grumble na wana meanwhile wakati. God has given us the principle Mungu kanuni. the sacrifice the bihu. when I see the blood I will pass over you and so when they placed the blood, the angel of destruction went out. And Israel was free from the bondage of Egypt. And many hundreds of years later, 
na wengi wa watumwa Jesus came Yesu akaja It says in Luke 24 verse 46 and verse 47 Anasema kwenye Luka 24:36 Luke 24 Luka 24 He says thus it is written Luke chapter 24 Thus Luka it is written Was it it clear? 46 46 it, and he said yes it was written long ago that the messiah would suffer and die and rise from the dead on the third day next verse it was also written that this message would be proclaimed in the authority of his name to all the nations beginning in jerusalem there is forgiveness of sins for all who repent amen amen listen to me Nisikilize. Jesus's death Kifo cha Yesu was a disaster. Ilikuwa ni hatari. But it was a mystery. Lakini kilikuwa ni siri. To his disciples. Kwa wanafunzi wake. They were confused. Walichanganyikiwa. They were troubled. Walipata tabu. They were perplexed. Walikuwa wame But that was not the end of the story that he died. Lakini kufa kwa Yesu alikuwa mwisho wa story. When Jesus hung on the cross, Yesu alipotundikwa msalabani, he had forgiven our sins. Alitumia dhambi zetu. Because kwa sababu the sin dhambi is the root ni chanzo of all the problems. Cha matatizo yote. And this is why na ndio maana from Wednesday kutoka I've been talking to us nimekuwa nikiongea about this woman kuhusiana na huyu mwanamke whom Jesus had a destiny alikuwa na had a purpose alikuwa na kusudi had an assignment for her alikuwa na kazi kwa jirani yake but she herself did not know lakini yeye mwanamke hakujua because her life was messed up kwa sababu maisha yake yalikuwa mabovu but when Jesus came to her na Yesu alipomjia and Jesus Jesus presented him to her na Yesu akajiwakilisha John 4:26 John chapter 4 and Yohana verse 26 Yohana 4:26 I want us to look at this before we pray Nataka tuangalie hii kabla tujaomba When Jesus presented to her Yesu alipokuwa kwa huyo mwanamke Jesus said to her Yesu alimweleza I that speak unto you Nine naye nawe am he ndiye She evoked an issue in verse 25. She says I know that the Messiah would come. Who is called the Christ? And Jesus said to her in verse 26. I am the Messiah. Mimi ndiye Messiah. Why? Kwa nini? Because kwa sababu, at this point in time wakati kama that huu, woman had let go had repented of all of her sins she had divorced her six husbands and she was willing to go on a ride of exploit with Jesus and Jesus said to her I am the Messiah listen in the entire Bible in all of the New Testament there is no nobody else that Jesus revealed himself to them like I am the Messiah not even to the disciples the disciples he said to them tell me who do people say I am and they guessed and they guessed and they guessed even when Peter got it Jesus did not say yes you are right I am the Messiah He said, flesh and blood did not reveal it to you. Jesus never told anybody else that I am the Messiah. It's only to this woman. And when this woman heard this, she did the sacrifice. Verse 28. The Bible says, Before Jesus she left her water pot and she went away Now listen what was she saying to Jesus I do not depend on anything physical to provide for me no more This is the only thing that I have When Jesus said to her Ask me and I will give you water 
niombe nami nitakupa maji what did she say to jesus alikuwa anamwambia nini you don't have a bucket hauna you don't have a cha kuchotea in, in other words she was boasting of what she had alikuwa anajielewa kile alichonacho me i have my water pot mimi nina mtungi wa maji you don't even have anything wewe huna chochote that water pot meant everything to her sasa mtungi wa maji ulikuwa unamaanisha kila kitu because that water pot kwa sababu wa mtungi was her connection to water ndio ulikuwa muunganiko wake kwenye maji water maji ladies and gentlemen mabibi na mabwana is life ni uzima in fact i am told hata hivyo mimi nimeambiwa that the human body mwamba mwili wa binadamu made up umetengenezwa 75% of water asilimia 75 ni maji in fact those in the profession nutritionists or doctors they'll tell you even more hao madaktari wanaweza kukuambia vizuri so when that woman sasa huyu mwanamke took that water pot akachukua ule mtungi and gave it to jesus akampatia yesu kristo everything that i have akasema vyote nilivyonayo i gave it to you ninakupa wewe are we surprised na sisi tunashangaa when she went back aliporudi and began to preach na akaanza kuhubiri all the men in her village wanaume wote kwenye kijiji chake they gave their lives to christ wakampa yesu maisha yao this woman huyu mwanamke one day Siku married moja, to six husbands alikuwa mmoja na wanaume sita gave a sacrifice akatoa dhabihu next day siku inayofuata she's a woman of influence ni mtumishi wa nguvu somebody says sacrifice mtu aseme dhabihu somebody says sacrifice sema dhabihu somebody says sacrifice sema dhabihu and it has to be painful na lazima iwe inakuwa when she gave that water pot alipotoa ule mtungi wa maji she had given about 75% of her life to god alitoa asilimia 75% ya maisha yake kwa mungu put it in a real way aliweka kwa njia gani she had given all of her life to god alitoa maisha yake yote kwa mungu you can live without water for 3 days uwezi kuishi bila maji kwa siku tatu when she did that alipofanya hivyo she was saying aliokolea i am willing to give you the ultimate sacrifice of that which i've got na akatoa dhabihu iliyokuu sana kwa kila alichokipata because i am ready for everything you have said to come to pass in my life kwa sababu niko kila kitu ulichokusema kitimia kwenye maisha yangu church of god kanisa la mungu god has a great destiny for his church mungu ana hatima kubwa kwa kanisa lake a woman came to jesus kuna mwanamke akamfuata yesu said to him akamwambia please tafadhali come heal my daughter Nenda ukamponye bibi Jesus says you don't understand. Yesu akamwambia huelewe. I cannot take what is meant for my church and give it to dogs. Mimi siwezi kuchukua chakula cha kanisa langu na God has great plans for his church. Mungu ana mpango kwa kanisa lake. But if his church kama kanisa lake is not ready to come before him kwenda mbele zake with the ultimate sacrifice. How can they step into the blessings that God has prepared for them? Sasa anawezaje kuwaletea baraka ambazo Mungu ameandalia? Without much ado without much ado basipo kufanya mengi i'm going to ask us i am going to ask us naenda kuwauliza to come before god mbele za mungu right where you are pale pale ulipo with a sacrifice uende na dhabihu the one that will feel the pain in your body ile ambayo italeta maumivu kwenye mwili wako the one that will feel the pain in your body ile ambayo italeta maumivu mwili wako you feel the pains in your pocket utasikia maumivu kwenye mkufu wako you feel the pains in your bank account utasikia maumivu kwenye account yako you feel the pains in your home utasikia maumivu kwenye nyumba yako that is meant only for those na hiyo ile inamaanisha kwa wale wants to go somewhere mbao anataka kwenda mahali you know unajua i'll never forget sita sahau this is in 2003 hii ni mwaka 2003 i've fought battles in my life nimepigana vita kwenye maisha yangu because kwa sababu a pioneering woman pa eh sorry a woman a foundational woman mwanamke mmoja wa kimsingi that is doing so many things for the first time that nobody has ever done ambao amefanya vitu vingi sana ambavyo hakuna mtu mwingine amefanya i have fought battles for the church nimepigana vita kanisani and the body of christ hated me na mwili wa kristo ukanichukia and the church fought me na kanisa likapigana na and men came against me na wanaume wakaja kinyume na mimi i used to fast for six months non stop nilikuwa nafunga miezi sita bila kukata because the battle was intense kwa sababu vita ilikuwa ni kubwa one day after such a, fa- a, 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 a fast siku moja baada ya mfungo i told god i'm tired of fighting nikamwambia mungu nimechoka kupigana you sent me here umenituma hapa but every day it is fight lakini kila siku ni vita every day it is fight kila siku ni vita and god says to me mungu akaniambia I was talking like that to God and I was crying on my knees. Nilikuwa naongea na Mungu nimepiga magoti na lia and I dozed off. Na nikalala and God gave me a vision. Mungu akanipa maono. And in that vision, na kwenye hayo maono, 
I saw an angel. Nikamuona malaika. Not an angel that comes in the form of a man. Sio malaika anayekuja kama mwanadamu. But an angel that comes in their impressive size. Na ni malaika ambao amekuja na kimo ambacho sio cha kawaida. And alafu my domain um was literally covered with but the battle was so intense that everywhere was dark. Sasa hiyo vita ilikuwa kubwa sana kila mahali pakawa giza. And I watched that angel. Na nikamuona huyo malaika in one stroke kwa yani mpigo mmoja he cleared off everywhere alifuta kila kitu and god says to me na mungu akaniambia it's not about your prayers si kuhusiana na maombi yako that you are alive ambao ndio unasababisha uwe hai that i fight for you but you don't know lakini ninapigana kwa ajili yako na hujui however vinginevyo when you think unapofikiri you have prayed kwamba umeomba and you have fasted kwamba umefunga and you are not getting me na haunipati offer me a sacrifice nitolee dhabihu who Hey. I said God. Nikamwambia Mungu. Should have told me this long ago. Ungeniambia hii zamani. Sacrifice. The bill I will give it to you God. Nitakupatia. And I gave God a sacrifice. Na nikampa Mungu dhabihu. You see at that time, unajua wakati huo, I was planning. Nilikuwa napanga to buy land for myself to build a house. kiwanja. And I had had some money. Na nilikuwa na pesa kidogo. Um 10 million CF in France would be like Ten million CFA would be like um, with the exchange rate now it might be like a little over twenty thousand dollars. Yes, twenty thousand dollars. How much is that in shillings? Like two million. Okay. Need so I had, I had that. Akaskia. So I said, God, you want a sacrifice? In this work I'm doing, that you called me. You know me, God. I don't run to lose. Mimi sipendi kupoteza. When I run, nikikosea, I want to take the price. Nataka nilipe so, gharama. This is what I've got. Na hii ndio nilichofikiria. Nika everything. Nikachukua kila kitu. I gave it to God. Nikatoa hiyo pesa ya kiwanja nikampa Mungu. When I did that. Nilipofanya hivyo. From 2003. Kuanzia mwaka 2003. My ministry has never remained the same. Huduma yangu haijabakia kawaida you tena. See? Thank you very much. Don't clap for me. I don't like that. The breakthroughs that I have had in life. Sasa upenyo ambao nimeupata kwenye maisha. I have never sijawahi gone to see somebody. Kwenda kumuona mtu and ask for something. Na kumuomba anipe kitu. I don't even know how to do it. Na hala sijui namna ya kuomba. You see my original nature. Unajua asili yangu kabisa is very timid, very reserved. Ni mtu ambaye naji So ministry is very good for me. So when I finish ministry and go they think oh it's because of the anointing not be anointing na ade shame na shy they do me at the road. Sasa akimaliza huduma huwa anaondoka sio kwa sababu ya amechoka lakini ni anaona aibu kuongea na watu. But you know unajua I was called to be a faculty in an international institute with headquarters in Hawaii. Alipata nafasi ya kufanya kazi katika makao makuu ya Hawaii I teach communication. Anafundisha kuhusiana na mawasiliano. I was called to be a representative of another of a leadership institute headquarters in Chicago. Ameitwa pia kuwa mwakilishi kufundisha kwenye institute pale Chicago. My government called me to come and represent some ministries when they were looking at corruption to come and stand in as an external auditor against corruption in my country sasa hata kwenye nchi yake anaitwa pia asimame kwa ajili ya ku eh, kuongelea mambo ya corruption i can keep naming a lot of kuendelea kutaja na kutaja i have ne- i never went out to any government person and said do me this or do me that hajawahi kwenda kwa mtu yote wa serikali na kumwambia nifanyie hivi nifanyie vile but you know lakini unajua god mungu went out on my behalf anatoka kwa niaba yangu and the breakthroughs i have received na upenyo ambao nimeupata from this kutoka kwenye hili and many more na mengineyo mengi not to talk of even the churches that were fighting against me suddenly everybody wants to collaborate with me sasa sio tu kuongelea ile makanisa yaliyokuwa yanapigana na mimi sasa kila mtu anataka awe shirika na mimi Some of you who have been listening to me when I talk about money you know I don't apologize when I talk about it right Unajua wengine mnao nisikiliza wakati naongelea masuala ya Because I am not talking about something that I'm learning I'm talking about something that I live Siongelei kitu ambacho nimekiona ongelea kitu ambacho nakiishi In my community kwenye jamii yangu we are separated by a road Tumetenganishwa na barabara This side is the affluent Upande huu ni wa The rich, the wealthy, the affluent. This side is the down and out, the poor. Na hii upande wa pili ni wa maskini. 
in this side, I have about 200, they are increasing about 280 children. I pay their school fees, I send them to school. I buy their books. Listen, I don't get sponsor from America, it comes from me. There are women there. They have husbands, but they are not doing well. I give them something, some traits to do, and I train them and I empower them. That is my sacrifice. When I learn the price of a sacrifice, I don't just want to do a once and for all sacrifice. I want to live a sacrifice. So every day, my sacrifice is speaking for me. If I tell you the level of battles that I fight on a daily basis, but I'm still standing. You know why? Because God surrounds me. My life speaks for me. My life speaks. My sacrifices speak. The blood of Jesus speaks. The Holy Spirit is there. My intercessor in heaven is there. Which enemy won't try me? Say they never born that enemy yet. So church, when I minister, I minister in passion. I minister in conviction. Because what I say is not what I read only, it's not what I've heard only, it's my lifestyle and without any apology. You want to succeed as a child of God a sacrifice. Nobody that ever brought a sacrifice, a painful sacrifice to God lived a lose a, a, a failed life. So 